On Judgment Day, will he read a list of everything we have ever done, good and bad? Yeah, so I just messed you up. This is question number seven. Okay, so one through six were last night. This is seven. Judgment Day. So I think this question is coming from a motive of somebody who's wanting to live right and doesn't want to have uh, stuff to answer for at the Judgment Day. And I would commend you if you sent that question in. Good question. And the answer is yes. We will give an account. Here's the scripture that will help you to understand this. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. The, the writer of Hebrews, the Holy Spirit, says this, And just as each person is destined to die once, and after that comes judgment. And that word judgment there is, is a word in the Greek language that accountants used. There will be a ledgering of what we've done. So what, what will we give an account for? Well, the Bible tells us we'll give an account for two things. As a matter of fact, the word account is used one time in the Gospels when Jesus is speaking. And here are the two things that we'll be responsible for at the judgment. You might want to jot these down. The things we do with our body and the words that we speak that are idle words, gossip words, slander words, uh, untruthful words. Those are what we will give an account for. Now, I know a Christian might be thinking, well, I thought when I got saved that meant that, that I didn't have to experience judgment. Well, that means you won't have to experience the consequences of the separation of sheep and goats judgment. It means that you have eternal life with God in heaven, but at the great white throne judgment, we will all give an account to the things that we've done with our bodies, both good and bad, and the things that we've spoken. Now, immediately, that can put a heavy. People go, oh, man. Let me give you another verse. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 1 that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to cleanse us of our sins and all unrighteousness. And literally what that means is, is when you do something wrong, when you say something wrong, if you've been baptized in the Spirit, if you're filled with the Spirit, the Holy Spirit will quicken you. He'll give you a, uh, uh. And if at that moment you recognize that was wrong what I said, or that what I just did was wrong, and then you confess it, and confess means you say, Lord, I just lied. You know it, I know it. That's not right. Help me to never do that again. That's confessing. What happens is it's wiped off. So here's what I think. I think we get with the Lord. We're there as believers. Judgment takes place. And I think there's going to be a lot of bleeped moments. <laughs> How many of y'all ever watch uh, stupid shows on TV where they're having to bleep? I mean, it happens even on good, sh good shows like Pawn Stars. <laughs> well, you learn a lot on Pawn Stars, right? But sometimes they have to bleep what those guys are saying because they're not Christian. Their words are not righteous. And that's what I think it's going to be like at the judgment. You'll get to a point, and there'll just be a bleep, and sometimes it'll be a long bleep. It'll go on for a while because what you did and what you said wasn't right, but you were quickened by the Spirit at the moment. You made it right. You're not going to have to give an account for that. It'll be wiped away. That's good news. Somebody say that's good news. So here's what will help you the most. Take a look at this. Having the fear of the Lord will keep you from evil. So if you want to know what mindset should you have so that you're going to enjoy the judgment and not regret the judgment is to invite the presence of the Lord to be with you everywhere all the time. It's called the fear of the Lord or having honor for God such that you honor him everywhere all the time. All right?